Now, in mindset management, we talk about different things such as you know, controlling emotions, the psychological aspect of performance, but here we talk about personality. Now, personality is important when you talk about training an athlete or a performer or any type of client because this dictates how they interact with their environment and the world around them. Now, here I use the big five factor theory, which is a commonly used personality assessment, which has five components, nicknamed the oceans because that's what the acronym spells, which is openness to experience, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. So I'll go through each one real quick. So open to experience is basically dealing with how is the person able to lend themselves to something that's not the norm. It's not just saying try new things. It's saying that things that are more like deeper to literature, the arts, a museum, because it's not saying that you have to love those things or like those things. It's basically saying that I would be open to experience those things. So maybe I'll be open to other circumstances that may not be my normal cup of tea. And now if you look at your performance, this is important because if you want to coach someone or get someone better, they first have to want to change and do something that's out of their comfort zone. So when I do this testing, I look for someone to, if they score low on this, I got to understand why are they not trying to do different things? Because once you get through that, it'll help you get further with them. Now, C is for conscientiousness. This is basically planning. Now, a person with high conscientiousness is like, think of all these, matter of fact, as a spectrum. It's high or low, but on one side or the other. So it's not like you're one thing or the other. That's why this is a trait theory, meaning that it's not just a, a type of thing that you are this or you're not. Now, type theories such as the Myers-Briggs have been refuted over the years, and I know a lot of dating sites use them. And I personally, when I used to use dating sites, I would see those and laugh because I know it doesn't really mean much. But these are more uh, efficient because you can see where you fall on a spectrum versus the all or nothing. So conscientiousness, this is a person who likes to plan things out, set goals, sometimes considered a perfectionist. So if you have a client or an athlete or any type of performer who would score high on conscientiousness, they're going to be able to follow through, they have good punctuality, and this is someone you probably want, but you don't want to be too, too high when everything has to be a certain way because like it's being an overachiever or perfectionist can have its hindrances because now you, if you have this type of a conscious person, you can look at them as like, okay, they're harder on yourself than most. So you don't want to be too over the top either. That's why it's always a balance. Now, next one, extroversion. This one gets, I feel, a lot of confusion because a lot of times with extroversion, they think it just means I'm extroverted, I'm the laugh of the party. While that could be a part of it, I think what people should look at it more so is not I'm, I'm an outgoing person versus not outgoing, but more so what scenarios and environments give me my ability to have that peace of mind to be me and function at a high level? Now, me personally, people think I'm extroverted, which I do have extroverted tendencies, but I'm really an introvert. And why this may counter what I just said, but basically what it means is I can be the life of the party. I can go out and speak in front of people like I'm doing right now. But the thing is, that's not going to be what makes me feel calm and ready. Like when I teach at Broward College, I feel exhausted, not because I hate teaching. I love teaching, but it's energy I have to put towards the outgoing. Be, hey, guys, we're going to talk about the anaerobic energy system. We're going to talk about personality. That takes energy from me. So I'm extroverted in the sense of the word, but when I go home, I'm like, ah. And that's the difference. The introverted person, they find their solemnness with being able to think, be in their thoughts, make decisions, plan things out, set goals, grow. Not saying that introvert can't go out and be the life of the party and vice versa. An extrovert does need to be to themselves sometimes, but they're not going to find that energy there. Being around people gives them that motivation to be who they need to be. Uh, agreeableness. This is great because when you think about, once again, being open to things, agreeableness is more so, are you going to give objection? Are you more optimistic? Are you more able to listen to different views that don't match your own? Now, this doesn't mean you have to be what they say you are, but it means that if I say left, you don't automatically say right. If I say up, you don't automatically say down. Because if you're able to take in different views that aren't yours, it'll give you a better chance to see the outlook. When you talk about coachability with an athlete, or you look at a student or something of that nature, if they're low on agreeableness, they're going to have trouble working in groups. If you're looking at team cohesion, like at a job or a team in a sport, you're going to have a trouble with them being a part of a team. So you need to look into that. And the last one is neuroticism. This is basically a person who's high on anxiety. They want to think the worst before the worst has happened. They already saw how it ends, begins, and finishes. They'll, they don't want to hear the, the better side of things, the optimism. They're aware that this may not be the outcome, but they're just sold that it's going to go bad. Now, if someone scores high on neuroticism, they're probably going to be a worry wart, and this can bring down performance in the sport, can bring around performance in school, because if you automatically say, why study? 
I'm not smart enough. It's a hard test. I'm going to fail. Guess what? You wrote yourself out of that already. So to reiterate, personality is a big thing I'm into and I've been studying it for almost a decade. It's big on being able to apply this to your athletes so you can be able to say, where do I fit here with them and where do they fit with me and my team? How can this help them perform? So like, for example, if you're doing a group workout with fitness, a person who's extroverted might do better than that. If they're a little extroverted, they might need to do a one-on-one. -on -one. Or if it's like in a work setting, you might want to have someone on your team's more conscientious because now they're able to set the goals so you can carry out the task that's given and not fall behind schedule. So personality is more than just, ooh, I like this person, they're great. No, it's a dynamic way to measure how a person behaves to predict performance and to be able to get your mind right.